Okay, good evening. The Design Review no Board Number 1 Public Meeting of August 5th, 2010 is called to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones and pagers. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. You will be called to present a case or speak on a specific item as desired. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a particular project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff to receive notice of subsequent meetings. Current Design Review Board agendas are available by calling our Design Review Board hotline at 818-548-3171 or by visiting our website at www.ci.glendale.ca.us. A handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and Design Review Board reconsideration and appeals is available at the table by the front door. Please note that all appeals must be filed within 15 calendar days of the Design Review Board decision date. The chairperson may reorder agenda items at his or her discretion. Roll call, Board Member Eliano. Present. Board Member Palmer. Here. Board Member Simonian. Present. Board Member Yu. Here. Uh, Chairman Instua is not present. Um, thereby, we would need to elect a chair pro tem. Do I have a motion? I move uh, that Mr. Aliano be chairperson. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, welcome, Chairman pro tem, Mr. Aliano. Stanley, you're on the chair. <laughs> Report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on July 29th, 2010. Oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. I do not have any oral communication cards. Chairman Pro Tem Miliano? No oral um, communication no, cards. No, All right. Nothing. Oh, and we would like to mention to our TV audience uh, the reason why you do not see the same hearing room is because we are actually being televised live from the new city council chambers. So with that said, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Mr. or Chairman Pro Tem Aliano um, for tonight's agenda. Thank you. So we have one case this evening. Um, we have two speaker cards. Just if I could have, uh, actually, you have to give your presentation first, right? That's correct. Please come up. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. The first case and the only case for tonight is case number PDR 2010-021A, located at 3308 Mills Avenue. This is a first time submittal for final review, and the proposal is to add 1,185 square feet to the existing to the rear of the existing 1,227 square foot house. This is a two-story addition to an existing two-story house, and the house sits on a 7,329 square foot lot in the R12 zone. The existing house is two-story at the rear, however, because the site slopes down towards the rear of the lot, it is it appears as if a one-story house when you view it from the street level. These the existing house was built in 1951, and the historic preservation planner has reviewed this project and determined that it's not of historic resource. There are a few clarifications I would like to make in the report. Uh, I stated that the existing windows at the front will be removed and replaced. That is not correct. Actually, the front windows will remain, and the proposed windows are not aluminum clad, but aluminum. Just plain aluminum all around, except for the front windows, they will remain as wood windows. Staff supports the project and recommends an approval with two recommended conditions. One is to provide wood sidings instead of stone veneer at the base of the structure, and the second one is to provide rectilinear roof line at the east side where the second floor roof cantilevers over the balcony. And you can see that on the roof plan. That is my brief presentation. If you have any questions, I'm available. The applicant is also here in the audience. Mr. Chair? Okay. okay. I have a quick question. Uh, what does uh, staff uh, mean by rectilinear roof? If I may come up in that Please. case and show it. In 
this portion right at the east side of the addition, the roof goes in a more circular I see. shape, and we recommend recommending the shape so that it matches with the overall style of the proposal. I see right here. I have a question for you today. Yes. Um, yeah, you staff recommends siding over the stone that's there. What that's is the good. reason for that? Uh, we thought because uh, stone is for more traditional style, and in this case, the house is, and Stephanie can correct me if I'm wrong, this house is t towards the modern and contemporary style. We thought horizontal siding would emphasize on the post horizontality of the overall design. Stay the stone. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, I have uh, two speakers' cards, one from the owner and one from the architect. Uh, would the owner like to come up first? Uh, Mr. David Bailey? I'm sorry? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Um, that would Do you, be fine. If you I want your actually, architect I would talk. actually prefer Tony. Sure, let me let's Expect bring to, Mr. To speak first and Mr. George up. Come on up. Good evening. I'm uh, Anthony George. I'm the architect. Our office is at 847 Mission Street in South Pasadena. I'd like to have my handout portion not part of my five minutes. We made a, uh, we made a hard uh, sample board for you to, to take a look and feel and, and sense a little better some of the material for you. It would be nice to put it there. Um, the applicant should note that that will now become part of the record, and we need to keep that. It's yours. Great. <laughs> my, my only suggestion is don't grab it by the stone, but you can, you can grab it any other way you wish there. Uh, we also have, um, just primarily because the stone was uh, possibly an issue, we took a sample piece that indicated the quality of the stone. This is El Dorado stone. We, we chose a sample that was indicative of the quality of the stone, but in terms of the field, we also brought, and I apologize for the, the messy nature of this, we brought a, a larger field sample of the stone to give you a better idea of what the field would look like. We'll come around. Uh, first, just a little, tiny little bit about our firm. Um, last night was my last night as the chair of the Design Review Board for South Pasadena. And uh, I don't know whether this is a good thing or not, but I was nominated to the Planning Commission. So uh, I certainly understand the position that you all are in. Um, we also share our office space with Mission Millworks. They uh, manufacture, distribute windows and doors, cabinetry, all kinds of things like that. Uh, our firm is very particular about quality of materials. And as a design review board member and as past chair, we were very uh, particular about quality of windows and installation of windows and doors. We specific, I'm, I'm going to be jumping around here a little bit, but we specifically chose uh, mill guard windows, uh, metal window corp uh, doors for the swinging doors, and Fleetwood for our sliding doors uh, because of their quality, color consistency, and how they were going to install into our project. Um, what we're doing with our aluminum windows and doors, which are, in, in our opinion, they're some of the highest quality you can get, we're recessing them into the walls and surrounding them with reclaimed redwood. The reclaimed redwood is from an existing patio enclosure at the rear of the house. We're going to recycle it, disassemble it, uh, redress it, and turn it into, into lumber for the project. Um, a little bit about the site. Our attempt here was to have the front elevation remain as unchanged as possible relative to its massing and its basic roof forms. We are taking the existing windows and surrounding them with uh, the like wood material that we're using here and adding a stone veneer up to the front. 
However, the masking from the front, we're trying to keep uh, exactly the way it is now. And two very interesting things about this site, actually three. Uh, one, if you got a chance to come by and take a look at it, I think you would be as equally overwhelmed as I was by the trees. Uh, the first time I visited the site, I came in the front door, and with all due respects to my client's existing house, was tremendously underwhelmed once we walked in the house. But once we got past and towards the back, the sense from the rear of the property with all these incredible mature oak trees was, was really beautiful. We're quite fortunate by the fact that we have a site to the rear of us that's lower than us, so we have a relatively unobstructed view of the foothills to the south of us. And the existing roof uh, starts at a plate height of about seven foot four inches and is vaulted at a, I, I believe it's a one and a half and 12 pitch or so up to the center of the center of the ridge. So it's seven foot two, seven foot four inches. That's quite a low roof. And what we wanted to do was take a low shape, still maintain it up at the front of the street, but uh, change the roof line 90 degrees and open the the building up as you head to the south of the site. That affords us uh, eight foot windows and doors towards the rear and part of the transition of the balconies and the kitchen were meant to help handle that transition between six foot eight and eight foot for the windows and doors. And if I can just very quickly uh, address two issues that were brought up and one is the uh, stone veneer. There's several reasons why we chose stone, uh, not least of which is it's what I consider an anchoring uh, earth component. Part of the building is meant to feel as though it's coming out of the ground and rising up towards the rear, which is the reason why we selected stone. And we like the wainscoting as a means of handling the transition between the two-story and the one-story space, but also tying the whole house together without, without redoing too much of the front of the building. Uh, the color scheme is all in earth tones, and uh, our long-term plan is ultimately to complete landscaping and have more stone elements in the landscaping rather than brick. So that's another key that maybe we didn't uh, parlay off to staff, but the intent is to tie all of this into the ground and then bring the, bring the house up out of the ground with the stone. Uh, the other is the radius for the roof. Primary reason for that entire element, and it's not just the roof, it's the balcony in front of it. Uh, we wanted a space on the outside specifically dedicated to barbecuing, something that was safe to keep away from all the other activities that are going to happen on the other balcony or the other porch. And if you carried that balcony in a usable shape, square to the building, you get one of two things. You either get a balcony that's, in my opinion, unusable, or one that zigzags back and forth back to the building. So therefore, that's where the curved shape came from. And the roof merely reflects that balcony shape. Um, also, from the back of the house, looking between the garage and the house, we felt that that curved shape was a very nice design element, bringing the eye around to the side of the building rather than, than everything being square. So that was the intent behind that. Um, and then one more comment. I'd, I'd like everybody to understand that we're capturing about 240 square feet, I believe, um, of basement space underneath the existing structure that's part of the overall square footage. So we're excavating back underneath the existing crawl space to gain some storage square footage and that's part of our square footage. Um, lastly and not least what I wanted to do was uh, distribute eight letters of support uh, from neighbors and if I can read off addresses for the record uh, 3309, 3301, 3300, 
excuse me, in 3324 and 3312, all have, uh, we have letters of support for our project that basically state um, that they're in support of the application as submitted and believe that its siting, massing, and details are compatible with and will enhance the character and quality of the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? I have three questions. Um, one, what you said you're not going to be changing the windows in the front facade Correct. only, and what are those right now? They are wood sliders. Uh, one of them is a, I think, is it one or both of them are three wide? Uh, two slide with a fixed in the, in the center. There's um, no grids on those? There are grids on, the, on those windows, correct. So, but, and are you changing the grids on the side windows? So you're going to have uh, gridded the, and then plain? I believe there are no grids on the side windows. Is that correct? The right side has grids. On the property line side? On the west side? Okay, I apologize. There are grids on the west side as well. And the other question I have is, uh, and it may be the drawings, okay. the scale, it appears that the surrounds around the windows overhang approximately 12 inches. Is that correct? or uh, Would you define overhang, meaning extend? Top piece is extended around each of the windows. Correct. The top piece does extend past... But it looks like it goes at least a foot on each side, and that's what I'm... I, it should be somewhere between 8 and 10 inches. Okay. And the other question I have, it doesn't show on any of the plans, but what's happening with the carport? Carport is being demolished. Okay. As a matter of fact, that's part of our reclaimed... It doesn't show on any of the plans, that's okay. why. I apologize. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what material is the roof? Existing and new. Existing is rolled. It's, uh, asphalt. It's Currently, a rock-covered asphalt roof, and we're proposing a new rolled roofing uh, asphalt system, preferably lighter in color, uh, a white. And I believe we have a sample of that, or at least a photograph of it, on our board. Okay. But still asphaltic. Thank you. Any other questions? I had actually a couple of questions as well. Um, the window surrounds, I couldn't tell, are they meant to be stained? Uh, the wood? Or clear is it coated. Clear I mean, uh, let's put it this way. Yes, it's, it's natural wood, but we would prefer to go with a clear finish. Okay. Uh, my preference would be oiled, but, but something to give it a depth of wood color and okay. then, then a clear coat on top of it. And that. is this what you were talking about, that it's uh, uh, a reused, recycled wood? Or? Correct. Okay. Correct. What, what's the species? Redwood. Redwood, okay. Correct. It's absolutely gorgeous lumber, and it's a... Right. A, and and what about the, the... Oh, I see here, okay. The, the columns are square, right? They're not round. They're Correct. Wood. The, uh, w I believe we have... Three or there's four. three of them. There's, there's three of them. They're steel, ah. and uh, they're painted. We have a sample of that color as well, but let's just say it's all in the same color range as, yeah. the, uh, as the window. Okay. Is and there... one more question. Um, have you considered, I know that you really um, um, want to use the stone, but have you considered a different pattern of stone, something that's more modern rather than this more sort of traditional pattern? Um, I'll tell you what. My preference would be, and if I get a swift kick in the butt here, we'll, we'll find out whether that's the direction we want to go. Um, with all due respects to staff, your observations about horizontal horizontality is right on the mark. We would like to have a, a rectilinear look, a horizontal look to it. So our preference always was for ledger stone uh, versus, yeah. say, uh, a river rock. And that's what I'm... Yeah. If, if, if uh, the board would like to see more expression of a horizontality or a, a linearness to it, that we could certainly explore that. Right, because with the ledger stone, you, st you get everything is consistent, and the edges are still kind of rough anyway, so you can still get the same look, except you don't get this sort of up and down of coursing, right? If I may... Uh, one of the drawbacks to our K 
CAD program and our rendering engine is that they give you only a certain type of stone uh, look. I can't get in there and make every piece of stone. So if, if that small sample there is a, a rectilinear enough... It's like laying bricks. It would be like laying bricks. Um, well, no, you do, get, you do get a variety in height from maybe one inch to two and a quarter or so. That You do vary because it's meant to feel like stone. It's not brick. We can, no, we can coursing, work on a... We can work on a and the coursing be consistent? In other words, you could have alternating sizes, but the coursing um, keep the joints basically consistent all the way across. We could we could certainly see if we could we could achieve that. I mean, I wanted to ask. That, I'm sure uh, we would like that up. actually. Okay. All right, that's all I had. Um, let me uh, ask the owner. Let me ask a question? couple of questions. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, the redwood there. That's a pretty accurate depiction of the, the redwood that you have. That's it, pretty. It, it is, and I'll tell you, um, that's from uh, Orban Lumber, their district offices that were built in the 40s. Um, I got it from that's fine. Larry's I just, office. I was just wondering if that's, that's an accurate depiction just that's because about as you know, there's such a variation of redwood out there that's, you know. His, you know. The stuff that's on his deck right now is about as tight a redwood as you're going to find. That's beautiful. It's very, okay. very tight. My other question is, uh, in your drawings, the window surrounds that you have, um, they're sort of de depicted differently depending on the window. For example, the, the length that's overhanging on each side is different per window, and also the proportion of the top versus the bottom and all of that. And I was just wondering if there's going to be sort of a, <laughs> a consistency in that. Well, that was, uh, I, would, I would blame um, my draftsman for that, which is... You're looking at him, so um, I'll take complete responsibility for that. The they are meant to be exactly the same. Okay. Uh, the top usually we like the top portion slightly taller than the sides and the bottom, and we do like to extend about eight to ten inches or so on the top. But they they are meant to be all the same regardless of the window size. Same width. The same dimensions. Oh, There's, really? In other words, they same won't proportion change. to each other per window. Correct. Okay. They won't change from window to window. Okay. Then we'll call it a graphic error then. Or an STO, a slight technical oversight. Oversight. I got you. <laughs> All right. Is that in your abbreviations list? Yes, it is. <laughs> That's a good one to put in. <laughs> I'll put that in. I might ask if, on, going back to those window dressings, um, are all the windows meant to be the same level when they're adjacent to each other? Um, and it may be the drawings. It may be the drawings, but it could also be how they, um, our office also learned how to use Revit. It may be how they, uh, they came in. I, I will say that there are only two window heights, six foot eight, measured to the underside of the like head, and there. eight feet, measured to the underside of the head. So the, I, I believe that there are really only two window heights. Obviously, the front, they're what they're, the, the front windows are where they are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me uh, ask the owner to come up. Uh, Mr. David Bailey, please. Um, I appreciate your willingness to hear our reasoning and everything for the, for the stone. State your, name, State your name and your address for the record, please. My name is David Bailey. I'm at 3308 Mills Avenue, La Crescenta. I'm the owner of the house. And uh, as I was saying, I'm, I'm happy that you're receptive to, to uh, give consideration to the things that we really want in this house. Um, it's been a, a, a long process. Um, Tony and I have been working on this project for, I would say, at least five years on the design. And I mean, we've gone in and out of actually, you know, working really hard on it. We'd take a break and we'd change things along the way. Um, at the heart of it has been several things, one being um, uh, things that my wife and I like, style. Um, 
And we've also really taken into consideration the property where it is. Like Tony mentioned, the oak trees. It's something that's really dear to us, and apparently it's dear to Glendale as you protect them uh, with a lot of earnesty. And uh, the arborist from Glendale was out to our property a few months ago, and she loved our design and said that if she were building the house, she would build it much the way we've designed it. So we've really worked, I think, a lot to stay within the guidelines, but yet create something very, very special, and, and it reflects the special nature of the property and the trees and everything. One more note on the, on the stone. I think the stone is another way to really tie the property into, I mean, the house into the property. The, the fact that the stone is natural blends itself very well with the trees. So those are my comments. Any, any questions? I have a question for him. Uh, because there were some comments made about the stone, uh, you just mentioned that um, you like the material and you feel as though it's, it's a good way to anchor it. Um, are you? Do you have any other preference for other materials such as siding or, or, or other materials? Have you considered as we did consider for that stone area. Sorry, we we did consider other materials. We we looked at siding. Um, we've been through renditions of several different things, and what we've presented today is what we really feel very strongly about. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now I will close the public session and we can deliberate. Uh. If uh, I may clarify, um, staff did make a couple of comments in the report in addition to what Mr. Nazarian said. Uh, there's a lightness in the overall design that uh, we felt the stone may not complement quite as much. And uh, in addition to that, there didn't seem to be natural place to stop and start the stone. And so we just wanted to make sure that in your deliberations okay. you had that information as well. Uh, sure, we don't have one. Why not? With all due respect, I'm Anthony George, 847 Mission Street, South Pasadena. Um, the starting and stopping-ness is inherent to any kind of siding or cladding. That is not necessarily indicative of an issue with stone. Um, and again, we'll just reiterate that relative to lightness, um, the coloring, the fact that it's of the earth, we'd like to note that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Question. Um, I think you're right. In either using stone or siding, there is sort of a of how do you decide where it starts and stops. Um, but equally, there's a there's an issue there. So I wanted to ask you about the eastern uh, elevation where the stone will come in and step down. Correct. Where is that determined? How do? You what we did was we balanced that step um, on either side of the transom window. Um, in the dining area, which is the uh, transom window basically up at the top of the driveway. So we relatively matched on either side the wall space and then dropped it at that point. Originally, there used to be a chimney there. Um, we removed that. Um, and this literally occurs right where that chimney used, used to be. We, could, we've, we experimented with carrying that line all the way across and then dropping it at the corner, and we just felt that was too heavy by the time you got down to that area. So we, we just mashed it on either side of the window. Okay. Uh, while you're up there, um, the windows, uh, they're, I would say, judging from the schedule, they're about 90% they're sliders, right? But then you have some awnings, some casements? Correct. And Explain those are that. those are primarily at the uh, kitchen area. So you That's have cases in the kitchen. Correct. That's because they're primarily uh, single units wide. We didn't want to go a double wide in order to accommodate a 
slider. It's just a, like a single pane. So that's where we have the casements. Single pane? What do you mean? Well, a slider oh, takes it's two just sashes. One, it's just one, right, right. Correct. Right. And we didn't want to make that more of a vertical element by breaking it up even further. So we kept a single sash okay. and made, it, made that operable versus slide. And then you have a, a window, I think it's E up on the west elevation. Is that there's a slider in the middle, two slider, and then the, the end ones are fixed? I'm okay. sorry, which, if, if it's an E, I believe that's an existing. These are fixed? Correct. Anything goes here? Correct. That is correct. And they, they, can, they, they can be, uh, I, I don't believe we're able to have a four, I would call it a four sash slider where they all slide. I believe you need to gang two sliders together, I believe. We can certainly look into that and have all of them slide, but at no point will more than one slide past the other. In other words, you, right, you right. can't open them all up. You, you, you're always limited to two sliding past each other. Okay. And these are the mill guard. Uh, are they they're the Integra? Uh, Those are the uh, integrity, or I apologize. I'm not a hundred percent certain whether they're the Integra, but they're the nicest ones that they. They're the paintable ones, right? They're well. It's it's aluminum. These aren't clad. These aren't vinyl or. Um, Oh, they're aluminum. They're aluminum. Standard aluminum. Yeah, full aluminum. Full oh, aluminum. Full aluminum. Okay. Correct. The only thing that they are not are thermally broken, which, for some strange so if reason, they're aluminum. What's the? Is that is that on the sample? The is it color? aluminum bronze? Is yeah. it the Correct. anodized bronze color? Correct. Okay. Okay. All right. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, then I will reclose the public session. And um, Simonia, would you like to start? Sure, I will uh, be the first one up this evening. Uh, I'd like to uh, start off by really uh, congratulating you, you know, this, this team, owner, architect, for working on this project for such a long time. I could tell there's been a lot of collaboration and uh, uh, this is probably one of the most detailed sets we've gotten. It's almost a construction document set. In fact, might be able to submit it in the, in the coming days. Uh, and the material board is, of course, uh, eloquently done uh, with a tremendous amount of detail and information. So all that is greatly appreciated. As I... Uh, uh, look through the project, uh, it, it, it really took some time for me to uh, peel back the layers of the onion, as you might say, for me to really understand it, because there was just a tremendous amount of information in this package. So uh, after going back and forth, back and forth, I finally was able to, um, I believe, get a holistic uh, idea of, of the design and the approach and so forth. And as far as the placement on the site, I think the building is uh, cleverly uh, situated. Uh, the way it um, gradually uh, has a, a roof that extends uh, on a nine degree slope, as you mentioned, to give, give that clearance that is required for the sliding doors and windows at the rear of the property creates a very interesting uh, roof line and also a very simple yet sophisticated uh, building form. And so when uh, I look at the profile of the building, uh, specifically the west elevation, um, there, there's uh, something very playful yet sophisticated about it. Uh, I think the horizontality of the windows, um, the rich textured window surrounds, and, and also the plainness of, of, of the skin of the building, I think, just all those combined create a very sophisticated um, facade. And, and so I absolutely appreciate that, and I must, uh, you know, comment on that because I believe the west elevation is, is, is perfect uh, in that there is 
a very um, simple approach to it. You have window openings, you have the facade material, you have the roof, and you have the railings, and that's it. I believe um, the stone is a deterrent. I believe it uh, takes away from the design. I, I believe the east elevation compared to the west elevation um, loses that um, sophistication. Now, that is a preference. That is also an opinion. And so um, I wanted to put that out there because you could tell a lot of effort has been put into this design. It's not one of those um, typical stone veneers that's applied to a facade just because they have nothing better to do or do not understand how to approach it and they just go, here we go, we're going to put some stone on this, we're going to dress it up and, and, and we're going to uh, introduce a second material on there. Um, you could tell that that's not the approach here. It was done in a very systematic manner. Um, that said, I believe it takes away from it. Now, uh, it is on the sides, it's not so much on the front, and it won't be as visible. And so, perhaps um, that's something that this board might not dwell on, or my colleagues might even not think it's an issue at all. But for me, um, the stone, I believe, I would agree with staff in that it uh, does take away from it. Now, all that said and done, um, I think the use of aluminum windows, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, fine with because I think we're introducing a modern building, more of a contemporary building, and so we're using more of a contemporary window. The anodized bronze aluminum will work perfectly with the setting, especially the colors chosen and so, so forth, and, and maintaining the existing windows in the front, perhaps, and introducing the aluminum in the sides is, or replacing all of it to an aluminum, in my opinion, is, is, is not an issue. Um, the railings, I believe, are well done as well. Uh, the roof uh, is a bit of an issue where those, uh, the front and the back, well, you have the existing roof in the front kind of integrating into this new wing roof, as you might call it, but you're doing a rolled-on roofing, which, which I believe will take care of that issue. That's probably why you went with such a material to begin with. And so overall, I, I think the, the design is thought out and, and, I'll, and I'll work and it'll be a beautiful addition. I would strongly urge you to stay away from that stone because I, I just think it's not going to work. And in fact, siding I don't think will work either. I think if you just keep it just the way it is, um, and if you look at the west elevation, just keep it like that, it'll be beautiful. Because you always have that issue when you turn the corner with the stone as you did on the west elevation, all of a sudden you have this thing that just sits there and it just pops out and it just screams, I'm a veneer, you know, it's not the real thing. So why introduce it? But again. Um, I would uh, venture uh, to not make it a condition, but a strong recommendation for you to reconsider it. So those are my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Um, I also, I like the design. I like the simplicity of the design. I, for the amount of time that you spent on this, I would recommend that you not keep the existing front windows and the side window because there's going to be a there's a sill on those they're a grid window and I think that's going to take away from the simplicity of this design so that would be my recommendation for those windows um, and I, I do have a small problem with the stone but I think that's a preference and if the stone is going to be used I notice here that you're taking out the brick area and to be reused. I don't know if that's going to be reused with the stone. I think that's a bad idea. And if the brick is coming out, um, I think this could be very nice, but I think maybe we should have a landscape plan to support how well done this is rather than just wait till another time because I don't think you're going to see uh, the front facade the way it shows now. You've got two driveways on one on either side and part of the house is blocked. So I, if you had a, uh, at least a front landscape that would complement the architecture, I think it would enhance it greatly. Um, let's see, the other comments. I think 
think I'll hold off for now and wait, listen to what the other representatives have to say. Okay. Um, I think first off, I think the in choice in who you chose to do the architecture portion, I think he's done a wonderful job on the project. Um, I like the look of the overall building. Um, I like some of the detailing that he's put in. Uh, especially like sort of the southern sort of patio as, as you're approaching in with the large opening area on the, with the columns coming down. It's a very sort of elegant way of, of creating that space in there. Um, the only thing that I have issues with, and there are more preferences, and that's, you know, it's up to you as an architect too to work on those, is the window surrounds seem a little heavy to me. Um, there's, they're sort of, the detailing of it is very, you know, rooted in uh, a different type of architecture. Um, and it, of course, as soon as you see that, you kind of think of those, those things. And so I would almost tend to keep the overhangs off of them as short as you can and box them in as much as possible so that all you read is sort of the color and then the niceness of the wood and not sort of, oh, that is a, you know, craftsman or whatever detailing of it. And so because as you're looking at that facade, I mean, you have this very elegant sort of canvas that you've created. You have sort of the ceiling joist, you know, tail ends, not covered, exposed, coming at you. And then you have sort of the composition of the windows. And then you have that detailing that kind of throws it off a little bit. But I, I leave that up to you. I think that you've done a wonderful job in designing the, the building itself. So, you know, that, that's sort of your preference. And that, if that's what you choose to do, then that's just my two cents. Um, the detailing of the surrounds is one thing. The stone... You know, I was thinking about it when, when people were making their cases for it. I think stone is fine. I think, you know, if that's what you choose to do. Um, but yeah, there is a little part of it where it does turn the corner that you could, if you could resolve that, you know, on the west exterior where it kind of turns, it's kind of, it looks almost accidental. Like it's just kind of, we've exposed something that wasn't supposed to be exposed or something on that stone. Uh, maybe come up with a way of maybe hitting it before it comes or turning over. Because yeah, on the east Exterior, you see the stone and the proportion to the stucco to the stone makes sense. And I, and I understand what you're talking about when you brought it down, where you brought that down. Um, but then you look at the other facade, and it's such a pure facade of stucco and windows, and then you have this little thing that kind of comes in. So um, take a look at it. Um, I'm not totally opposed to the stone. I'd be okay with it. Um, I think he's put careful th thought into the rest of the project. I think he could figure out the stone on that. So Thank you. Yes, I also like to commend you. I think you've done a really nice job um, uh, with this project. I mean, it's very rich. You know, you look at the, the, the colored drawings, and there's a certain richness to it that I, I like a lot, and I think is very appropriate for the area. Uh, I like the, the exposed wood. I like the, the, to me, I mean, the rear is really more of a post and beam sort of design, which is uh, contemporary. It's modern. Um, uh, and so the language already is established by that, uh, and so the whole building to me, as staff said, it has more of a modern feel to it. Um, and not to reiterate, but the stone is a, is a good observation, you know, the, the stone issue. Uh, I think if you are going to use stone, um, and for me, I think you need to use something that's more of a contempt, more of a modern pattern. And I'm thinking just very strong lines. I mean, for me, I would even go as far as using face block. I mean, I would use like a CMU or something small, very clean and crisp, because this building to me has a very raw nature, and you're trying to, uh, uh, in a sense, it's being decorated because you're doing a lot of these window surrounds uh, that have a very stylized look. So, to me, the bold roof and the, and the bold sides are very, they sort of say to me, things have to be very simple, and but that doesn't mean you can't detail, it doesn't mean you can't make it nice. Um, so, I like the, the rest of the, the, the board. I'm not going to require that you you have a certain um, uh, whether you have the stone or not. But I, I think I would strongly encourage that the stone at least has more of a modern pattern. Um, and um, um, you know, I'm, I'm a little perplexed with the windows because the windows are all sliders. They're aluminum again. The fact that the sliders, the fact that they're aluminum, that to me says modern. I mean, you don't really see aluminum and even sliders in a more traditional style where 
the surrounds as beautiful as they're going to be you know, because they're going to be wood and they're going to be natural, uh, sort of a clear look. It has more of a traditional, it has more of a, I say, arts and crafts look. You know, it has a the sort of bungalow detail that you see throughout Pasadena uh, uh, in a lot of the bungalow style buildings there. So, again, if you want to stay, and I think you should stay with the modern, is I agree with Mr. Yu. I think the window surrounds, you can have them in wood. I don't think we're, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but I think the, the sort of, um, um, uh, motif that you have where they extend, I have to agree. I mean, it has this traditional look. Um, and you can very easily do a surround that's very crisp and clean. You could even do a squared off where maybe the top piece is a little, maybe it's a little heavier so you can create a little shadow line. I'm not going to try to design it because I, I think, judging from all of this, I, I know that you, you can pull all these things together based on what we're saying and make it work without being prescri prescribing what, what you should do. Uh, I'd rather just give you sort of a general direction. Um, and so, so actually the windows actually trouble me a little bit, the surrounds, because if you're going to go with aluminum, to me that says modern. The surround is not modern. Uh, it's more traditional. Um, and I, I really, uh, I like the, the rear. I like these columns soaring up and creating this beautiful deck. I think it's, it's, uh, it's to me, it's the signature of the, of the, of the building. Um, I'm a little, I have to say, disappointed that you decided not to do anything with the front because I think you could bring some of this language to the front. And I'm sure that has implications, probably monetary implications, but, but it would have been nice to see some of this language in the back brought to the front because you could easily take the half of the house where the doorway is and you can easily take the roof there and raise it a little bit where you can actually introduce some of these columns, these posts. In other words, your roof right now it sort of has this kind of a thing. You could easily pop up in front a little bit, and you, where you're creating more of a sort of asymmetrical butterfly roof, where you have the stronger gesture in the back because it needs it because you got more more stuff. But then in the front, you're trying to bring some of that language. Maybe you could, or maybe you could even keep the shed roof and do one of those, um, which again are very. Uh, that does a drawing to show that. But. Microphone. Oh yes, of course. Sorry. Um, yeah, I know there's logistics involved here, so I, I'm not requiring that you do this, but if you visit this, you could easily put even maybe a roof that's, you know, this could be a shed, and that, or it, it could be the way, and you could keep the shed, you know, everything going in that direction, maybe do a, sort of a cut in the roof where you have one of those clear story that pops up in the middle of the roof, where you're actually now introducing a nice horizontal element. I'm not sure if, if I'm explaining this correctly, but basically... I'd call that a kitchen. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could, do, uh, you could do a number of things. And again, uh, I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm just saying it would have been nice to see something in the front because this front is very kind of simple. You know, it's, it's not saying anything about what's going on in the back, and it would be nice to bring some of that in the front. So if, that, if you can fit that in your budget and if you can fit that in your scope of work, I think I would strongly encourage some more improvements in the front. So I think I've said enough. I think there's been a lot of good comments here. But overall, i like to stress that I really think you did a nice job, and I think it's going to be a nice project. Um, but if you, in my view, if you make these little refinements, I think it will be a very strong project. And uh, that's basically it for me. Anybody want to add anything else? Okay. Well, do we, anybody want to? Yeah, before we do that, if you... You want to read the I comments? would like to go over the comments. Sure. It sounded that the board had a strong consensus on the stone, and it's recommended by the board to either remove them or reconsider a different type of stone that provides more horizontality and matches with the exist the proposed style of the house. And, and modern. I mean, I think I use the word style. modern. Yeah. Correct. And. I also heard Ms. Palmer mention or adding a consideration to change the front and side windows of the existing to match the proposal as well. And that the uh, replacing of the front and side windows to match the proposed win with the proposal. That would be basically... That, that was one comment. That was a consideration, correct. A recommendation. How many windows would that affect? Uh, there are two at the front. There are two. One on the side. So and three then one on the side. Yes. 
That was, uh, and then I also have another comment made about the proposed windows of the surrounds. They seem a bit heavier and perhaps shortening the overhangs on the sides or even not having any to keep with this style of the aluminum, proposed aluminum windows, which is more modern and the surrounds seem to be more traditional to also create consistency within. And one more consideration that I heard was added by Mr. Aliano was to redesign the front house somewhat to, to match the proposal as well and that would could be done perhaps by providing a clear story roof at the f towards the front. Well, maybe, maybe I can rephrase that. I mean, all I was saying is that it would be nice to bring some of the language that's in the back to the, to the front. front. How would they choose to do it? It's okay. up to them, but I just thought it would be a good thing to say to, to sort of bring some of that language in the front. And my feeling is that, I don't know if the engineering has been done yet, but once you remove so much roof area, and you probably know this as well, you might not end up with that much roof left anyway, so you might have to redo some of that roof. So if that's the case, then there would be a good opportunity to sort of rethink that roof so that it has a, a language similar to the back. But again, these are just considerations and not requirements. And lastly, I would like Mr. Yu to sort of cl clarify on the comment regarding the west elevation where the stone turns. I was not too clear on that one. If you don't mind, please clarifying so I can get that point. Sure. I was just talking about these two parts here. So that would be on west elevation. I mean, if it stone. means you eliminate the stone here so it doesn't turn or if you stop it somewhere. So you have such a clear language here and here, and then you have these little. When we looked at it, we also were a little confounded as where it would start and stop. That would be more consistent and... I guess I'd look to you if the stone is optional to remain, because it sounds like these are considerations rather than conditions, if uh, what we're hearing from the board is that it maybe shouldn't start and stop, but should be continuous, because it's tough to find a natural point for it to start and stop. A little more specifics would be useful since there is apparently some disagreement between the board and the applicant as to what direction to go in. Can I ask you a question about this? Yeah, actually, you know, the session is closed and, and we're deliberating at this point. Lastly, uh, there was, this one sounded like a condition by Ms. Palmer to provide landscaping at the front that if the stone is to be kept, provide landscaping that will match and complement the proposed stone. I think in general to provide landscaping that complements the proposed. That would be, I, I took that as a condition. I would think so, yes. Okay. That's all I have if you have any other Comments. I think Mr. Simone wants to add. Well, st staff is um, asking for some uh, feedback from the board as far as the stones are concerned, the stone veneers concerned, um, logical places to start and end it, and so forth. Um, as, as, as you start looking at these elevations, I believe three of the four elevations have uh, stone veneers on them. And so, therefore, when they turn the corner, all of a sudden on the west elevation, we have what Mr. Yu pointed out, is it abruptly stops. And that's always going to occur when you have stone on three sides and when you don't on one, one side. So you either got to pop out the building in those areas where it turns the corner so it logically dies into the building or, or do something else. Um, again, you're, when you're looking at the east elevation, 40% of it is, is stone. And, and so there's really no logical explanation for it except that the owner likes it. And so that's really uh, going to be up to the architect to come up with some sort of uh, methodology, some sort of uh, a strategy to integrate it into it. Uh, because usually when they integrate stone, as we all know, it's, it's for the base of the building. And it's maybe for the first floor or it's maybe for some sort of the foundation work. But when it's applied to a majority of the elevation, it becomes very hard to justify it, and that's what we're facing here. And so I think if you want to really keep the stone, then you have to pop out the building at certain portions and have the stone die into it. 
as it turns a corner. Or you're always going to be faced with, with, with the situation. And also, as Mr. Aliona pointed out, a, a, a different type of a masonry unit, whether it's more linear. Um, and I think if they use a certain type of a CMU block that's very linear, as you absolutely. prescribed, it would absolutely change the look of it, and it would go along with the designs. And um, that might be enough feedback for staff, I guess, to Just work to with Just to add a comment on that, popping out the... Uh, the building on that elevation would be impossible because there would be setback problems. They are currently at the required setback of five feet. They couldn't encroach into beyond five on the, feet. Well, they could maybe the pop. Well, they could maybe move it inside. That would be another solution, yes. Or they can just continue it on the portion that's on the which elevation. I mean, they could put a base all the way around and just die with elevation. the plant. They can just come in and die it into the I mean, door. You can die and die even this plant. Then you have a stone base all around the building, yeah. basically. Uh, it's It'll consistent. be consistent. Yeah, that's fine. I agree. That way there's no issue where to stop and where to start. If they like the stone, they could do that. I mean. Okay, so just to sum up what we heard, that uh, the consideration is actually what we're hearing is that it's a consideration to not have the stone but if there is the, the stone to remain in the proposal, it should be more linear in nature and continue around the building where it then steps down on the east elevation, make sure that those are also logical points for stepping, stepping the stone down. Okay, I think we got that. And then the, um, the landscaping, we couldn't hear on this side if that was a consideration or a condition. I'd make that a condition because I think it's a real nice design and that would help enhance it. Okay, so we're conditioning uh, a landscape plan for the front of the property prior to issuance of a building permit. All right. With and that, did you, did you read that? that was, did you add the comment about the window surrounds? I didn't yes, I did. Okay. That they should be crisp and clean modern. The, and, modern. and modern. modern. And also consistent as far as heights go. And, and if there's going to be any extension, well, no, they should be consistent throughout. I, I'm saying the extension is too much of a traditional motif. I'm saying if you're going to have a surround, make it, come up with a way to make it more, more modern looking. And that would be what we heard is no extension on the sill trim and the header trim. If that's what it takes to, to achieve that, but certainly they can come up with options. And, and then we, we heard that as a condition, not a consideration? That's a question. Okay. Yeah. We can um, make that because I think that's a big deal. I mean, it's, it sort of changes the look quite a bit. And nice before study. you take a vote, it seems like the architect is anxious to have a last word. So. I can reopen before we make a motion because there's no motion on the floor yet. So go ahead, come on up. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. If I may, um, I'm not familiar with Glendale's procedure, so that's more what I was chomping at the bit over, chomping at my pen over. Um, if I may ask for one of two things. Um, one, and a question as well, would it be appropriate for us to bring a set of revisions back to the chair for a chair review. I don't know whether this board let me, has... Let me, let me interrupt you. I think, judging from the way things are going here, it looks like we're going to have some requirements and some considerations, and then you will be dealing primarily with staff. Okay. Uh, it, it, well, I don't think it looks like we're going to ask you to come back to us to okay. review. So you'll be working with staff to make sure that those conditions and okay. considerations are, are, are res responded to. And then uh, lastly, the only thing I'd like to observe, at least from our end, I believe really only one of you were contemplating having the surrounds flush. And by my definition, I'll say flush, meaning the top portion is flush with the sides. Currently, the detail is that the header is thicker than the jams by a quarter of an inch. Okay. And so what I would like to ask is that we do have an extension that expresses the trabiatedness of it, but limit it to much less than eight inches, maybe a quarter inch or so. But what yeah. we would like to have that... Okay, if I, uh, my mate, I mean, I don't know that. I don't think we want to be that restrictive. Uh, uh, I think all we're saying is uh, 
make those surrounds look more modern. And and if it requires that you, you know, for your taste, you want to give it a little bit more, uh, give it a quarter of an inch over. If it looks modern, then it's probably you're on the right direction. It's for waterproofing because if it's flush, water will get right in there and open up. Okay. Well, well, I think we're going to leave it up to you. I don't think we need to be. I that. don't think we even said to make yeah. it flush. It was just yeah. whatever you need to do to make just it. Don't just don't make it look fine. Uh, modern. That's all. Right. Well, I'm just saying. Just don't make it look arts and crafts because that's what it looks like right now. You're correct, and I stand corrected. So. <laughs> For the record, um, the language of the condition as I have it now could read that on the surrounds make them more crisp, shorten or remove the extension for a more modern look. Yeah. Does that sound like it reflects the board's I think sense? that's general enough for, to give them enough freedom to do what they want to do. I agree with that. Is that okay with you? That sounds good. All right. With, with that, do we have a motion? I make a motion to approve with the conditions and suggestions. I guess we have we have both, right? And second. I'll second that. Okay, this is a roll call. Mr. Simonian? Yes. Mr. Yu? Yes. Ms. Palmer? Yes. Chairman Pro Temp Oliano? Oh. Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Motion passes forgot who was. zero. <laughs> forgot that I was the chair. <laughs> um, very good. Well, thank you very again. Much. I, I think you. I want to make sure you leave here knowing that this board really enjoyed your project, and we appreciate it. As staff as well, yes. And uh, anybody that wa any of you that wants to move to South Pasadena, there's a vacancy on the design review board. We could, we could <laughs> comments like these. It's greatly appreciated. We make more money here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop. Come on. Don't forget, two times zero is still zero. Exactly. Uh, and do you, want the, do you want to keep the box sample as well? You can do we take this. No. We're, we're probably no, not going to we're probably not gonna yes. use them anyway. So. Just to let you know, we don't we don't get paid for this. So, okay. Cause a lot of trouble. Yeah, it's just a joke. Oh, we still have. Okay, that concludes the one and only item on tonight's design review board agenda. We do have two sets of minutes: uh, one from July the eighth, and one from July the twenty second. The first set of minutes, uh, board member, well, Chairman Insua was not present, so all four board members were present. And we had two items on that agenda. One was the El Miradero Avenue case, and the other one was the Geneva Street. Um, actually, there was a comment made by board member Palmer regarding the landscaping, and uh, Mr. Nazarian took a look at the, at the tapes, and there was a comment made. Act ultimately, it was decided upon that um, maybe Board Member Nazarian would like to speak to that one. Uh, in our I'm regional, Mister, <laughs> not one. yet. Maybe one day. <laughs> Step up here. <laughs> in our original record of decision, it read that the uh, if the portions of the hedges that are in the city property are removed, new hedges should be planted, and that was altered to that the language was altered to read as if the city property, the hedges are removed, it should be landscaped appropriately to screen. And now they don't have to be hedges. And then landscaping that will also match the existing style. Which is what you said. That's, that's what I thought was. I move that we approve those minutes. Okay, so we have a motion by Board Member Palmer. Is there a second? A second. Board Member Yu. Uh, Board Member Palmer? In terms of roll call, sorry. Yes. Board member Yu? Yes. Board member Eliano? Yes. Board member Simonian? Yes. The motion passes to approve the minutes of July the 8th. Thank you. And this brings us to the minutes of July the 22nd. And all five board members were present. Um, and we actually had three items on that night's agenda Fifth Avenue legalization, a new multifamily on Pacific, and a legalization on Burrett Way. Any comments? Is there a motion to approve those minutes? A motion to approve the minutes by Board Member Palmer. Is there a second? Second. Board Member Yu. Uh, in terms of a roll call, Board Member Palmer? Yes. Board Member Yu? Yes. Chairman Pro Tem 
Emiliano, mm-hmm. yes. yes. And board member <laughs> Simonian? Yes. Motion passes 4-0. So many titles. That said, um, any staff announcements, Stephanie? No staff announcements. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting at a quarter after 6? I move to adjourn. Thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned.